Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. We're going to continue on our journey regarding hypothyroid and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Last week, we talked about Hashimoto's thyroiditis and how hypothyroid patients, about 90% of them, have an autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. What impacts Hashimoto's thyroiditis for patients is things like gluten intolerance can impact Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And the reason is certain gluten peptides can look like or mimic a thyroid gland. So some of the amino acid sequencing of a gluten protein may look very similar in nature as the thyroid gland. Therefore, if you eat gluten, it creates a problem with thyroid or hypothyroid, okay? So in the traditional sense, when we look for gluten sensitivity, or let's say celiac disease, the autoimmune version of gluten problems, if you have celiac disease, or if they suspect that you have celiac disease, they will do a, a few different tests to see if you have that autoimmune process going on. So the traditional tests or traditional medical tests for celiac disease is something called tissue transglutaminase, IgA antibodies, right? This is a blood test. And you can do those at, at, at the doctor's office where they will just kind of screen you to see if you have any problems with gluten, okay? The next one is called N endomesial antibodies, and that can be done in the blood. Um, but then you can also do endoscopies where they take biopsies and look at, um, look at it under their microscope to look to see if there's blunting of the microvilli, uh, which can be diagnostic of celiac disease. Now, you have to have enough damage in the gut lining to show blunting of the microvilli. So sometimes if you do an endoscopy early on, uh, it may not show that you have celiac disease only because the, uh, the, the generation of the microvilli is not there at this point. Another thing we could do is something called total IgA. So when they run this test and they check for IgA antibodies, if you have low IgA, then it may not show that it's positive, right? So the total IgA will tell you or will let you know that your immune system is probably not developing enough antibodies to this to even show a positive. So you can do a total IgA. If the IgA is low, you can do something called deaminated gliadin peptides, right? And often they will do this on children to see if they have problems with it. Another one um, you can do with children and adults is a genetic test, which they look for markers called HLA-DQ2 and 8. This is good for people who are already on a gluten-free diet, and they want to know if they have a genetic predisposition to possibly develop celiac disease. So it doesn't mean that you have celiac disease, it just means that your prevalence is going to be higher when you have these genetic components than the general population, right? So it's looking at genetic predisposition not that you actually have celiac disease. The problem is when you have these tests and they are negative, it does not show that you have a gluten problem, right? Then what is your next avenue, right? Because people will say, you know, Dr. Sung, I went to uh, a specialist, I had the endoscopy, I had this test, blood test, and it was negative. Yet when I have gluten or gluten containing proteins, I get brain fog, I might get joint pain, GI upset, right? Some cognitive di difficulties, even in the, in the balance centers, right? What is going on when they tell you, you don't have any problems with gluten, yet when you eat gluten, you have symptoms, right? It can be explained in that the testing is not complete, right? In order to look at gluten, you have to look at multitude of different peptides or different components of gluten to de determine if you have gluten sensitivity. Not necessarily full-blown celiac disease, which is the autoimmune version, but gluten sensitivity. It's important to make that distinction. One of the best labs that I found uh, to test for gluten sensitivity is something is a lab called Cyrex Labs. 
and they will check different peptides and different proteins within the gluten, right? And it will look for different markers, both IgA uh, and IgG, because uh, it looks at different immune responses. So, when patients come in and they, uh, the traditional tests are negative, and they, we suspect they may have gluten sensitivity, we'll run this test, right? So look at how many different types of tests that you can run specifically for gluten sensitive patients, right? So when we run these tests, we're looking at all the components, right? Um, that will look at different immune responses, total IgA and IgG. It's important to do all of it and be very thorough in the testing to determine if you have a gluten problem, all right? So each of these will affect different areas, right? So let's, let's take these three on the bottom here, for example. If you have a positive IgG and IgA or transglutaminase 2, you may have GI issues and GI autoimmunity, okay? If you have a positive transglutaminase Three, you may have conditions like psoriatic uh, skin conditions, eczema, things that affect the skin, okay? And you might be positive for transglutaminase three. If you're positive for transglutaminase six, this can affect nerve tissue or brain tissue. Then you may have brain fog, cognitive difficulties, balance disturbances, right? You, you're that patient who has gluten and just feel disoriented, right? Um, it's very important to distinguish what type of peptide or gluten protein you may have that's positive and then correlate it to some of the symptoms. So if you have a transglutaminous cyst, you might have uh, transglutaminous 2, you may have GI issues, transglutaminase 3, you might have skin issues, uh, transglutaminase 6, you might have uh, nervous tissue. Right? It could be peripheral nerves, or it can be central nervous system. So it's important to distinguish that. And the lab we, call, we use is cyrexlabs.com. Okay? There are a multitude of different tests on that site, but this is array, I believe it's array number three, and it looks at all the gluten proteins. Right? If, you put, if you message me uh, with your email, your name and email, I will send you the guide on how to read a test like this, right? It was developed by Cyrix Lab, um, the leading PhD or leading immunologist who's gonna look at this is uh, Dr. Vishdani. Um, he has written a multitude of papers on immunology and he's the one who developed these types of tests. And it's the leading, most sensitive type of test that you can do if you suspect you have gluten problems, all right? So, Put your, uh, send me a instant message and put your email and your name and I will go ahead and send you a, a guide on how to read a test like Cyrix Array 3, okay? So it's important for you guys to be educated. And if you wanna run a test like this, uh, please call the office at 978-688-6999 or message us and we can probably get the testing done for you, okay? My name is Dr. Jim Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.